Hi and welcome to this tutorial on Hibernate. In our previous two tutorials, we wrote a model object and we saved the model object in the database using Hibernate APIs. Uh, we did not write any SQL queries for it. We just used the Hibernate APIs, which did all the work for us. And uh, we managed to insert a new record into the table by using a model object and passing it on to Hibernate. Uh, in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to extract that model object back from the database to objects in the memory. Again, we, we are, uh, we're gonna use Hibernate APIs. We're not gonna write any SQL queries. Uh, we can, of course, write SQL queries. Hibernate does allow that, but uh, you know, writing SQL queries directly defeats the whole point of going with an ORM tool like Hibernate in the first place. So um, we'll try to do that using the Hibernate APIs, and uh, we'll um, we'll try to fetch the object that we have inserted. So uh, this is this is a code that I have for uh, a previous tutorial where we created a user object we populated some values and then we used the session object from the session factory of hibernate to save that user okay after this comment what i'm going to do is i'm going to write a session dot close to actually close the session ideally what would happen is uh, the session dot close would probably be in a finally block and uh, you would catch any exceptions here by uh, a cache block which has uh, you know probably a transaction dot rollback and you finally would have a session dot close but then because of brevity i'm not doing any error handling here so i'm just putting the session dot close over here to make sure that the session has been closed now what i'll do is i will open a new session and in this session i'm going to fetch the object that i have inserted in the previous session so i have this user object here now what I'll do is I will set user as null. Now let me fetch the user again by opening a new session. Now the second time I don't have to actually create a new session factory. As I told you before, a session factory is created only once per application. It is a very expensive object. It takes a lot of resources to create. So it's better to have one object in your application and then all your different methods and all your different classes use that object itself to create sessions. We'll look at what are the ways in which we can do it, the ways in which we can share a session factory object across different classes and um, you know different layers even. But for now, we have defined it in the main method and we're gonna use the same object. So what I'll do is I will, I'll again copy these two lines. So what I need to do now is I need to have a new session object and then I need to begin transaction. I'll just paste this here. I don't have to define it this time. So here, what I'll do is I will use the session object to actually get the value that we have saved here. Now, how do I fetch a value that I've already inserted? I do that by using session dot get now the session dot get takes two parameters the first parameter is the class that you're trying to retrieve so i'm trying to retrieve a user object so i need to mention the class for that user object so this would be user i'm sorry that's user details dot class uh, we'll come to the second argument in a minute, but look at what I'm doing here. Normally, when you're uh, when you're fetching data from the database, you would normally specify a table name and say select star from the user details table. Now, here since we're using a hi since we're using Hibernate, which is an ORM tool, we are not going to be dealing with tables directly. Instead, all we're going to be dealing with are objects and classes because we are looking at it in a, at an object paradigm. Now. In order to fetch some values, what I need to do is I need to tell Hibernate what is the model object that I'm trying to retrieve. I'm trying to retrieve objects of this user details class. So the class is what I need to mention over here. So the 
value that session dot get retrieves me are objects of this class. Okay, so now we have established what is the object that we need. Now we need to tell Hibernate what is the data that we need. We could have a hundred users in this user details table, and uh, you know we wouldn't want to get all of them. So we'll have to specify what exactly is the object that we need. And uh, the best way to specify the object that we need is by mentioning what is the primary key. The primary key in this case is one, which is the user ID. So I need to pass the user ID one as the second argument to the session dot get. So all I'll do is I'll just pass the value one here and we are done. Now, do I have to mention what the key is as well? No, I don't have to do that because Hibernate already knows that the key here is this user ID because we have annotated it with at ID. So we are all set here. We have uh, we have passed what object we need and what is the data which is in the object, what is the primary key of that object. So it's gonna end up with just one record of course, we only have one record in the database, but even if we have multiple records, it would just pull up the record with the user ID as one and the session.get would return that record. So let's capture that. I will have a user equals session.get so, so that the value that it's returning is captured to this object. I can later use this object to get the member variables. Now session.get has a return type of object. So in order to put that object into my model, I will have to cast this. So the way I cast it is by specifying the class name over here so that I can assign it to this user object. So now we have the user object. So what I'll do is I'll just do a system dot out dot println I'll say user username retrieved is user dot get username. Now this should return me first user, which is the username that we have set. So now let's save this. Let's uh, make sure that this is set to create at the hpm2ddl.auto so that it creates everything from the scratch. And now I can run this class. So there you go. It has inserted the user details value here and it is doing a select. What is causing the select? Select is caused by our get method over here. Now it's doing, it's running a select and then it's capturing the values and then it's doing all the work for us when it comes to you know converting the values inside the record set into an actual object and then it's saving it into the user object now when i do a system.out.println i'm getting a username here now i'm getting the first name from getter because this is the code change that we made in our previous tutorial if you look at this the getter has a from getter value. So if I remove this, save, and let me run this again. There you go. First user is what comes up. So this is one of the many ways in which we can fetch data in Hibernate. There are a lot of other options. We can run what is called as Hibernate query language queries, HQL queries, and we can also write SQL queries directly. So we'll look at all these other options later. But uh, for now, we know that this is one of the ways in which we can get any user object if we know the primary key. We just pass the class value and the primary key value to a session dot get and it's going to go go to the right table depending on the class it's going to go to the right table and then it's going to do a select where the primary key is one so we know for sure that it'll just return one record we can cast that object into our user model and then we can use it as required